ABC. Was Francis and Ghana robbed? Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome to the channel. And we're going to discuss the fight between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. So, to be clear, Francis Ngannou lost. And he wasn't robbed. We'll discuss the scores a bit later. But we need to discuss a few things first. When we have two fighters in the ring, it's easy to have a bias. We're all rooting for the underdog. Ngannou may have lost, but he definitely won our hearts. And he's probably got a very bright boxing career ahead of him. Now the issue is when it comes to scoring a boxing fight, it's, per, it's scored per round. There may be a misconception between ring control and effective aggression. So when we say ring control, you're 95% of the time going to win the fight. Because it's easier to achieve effective aggression. Right? Because you're controlling the pace of the fight, you're walking your opponent down, you can get them to the ropes, you can land more punches. However, if that other boxer is good on fighting on the outside, being an outboxer, then, you know, slipping, parrying, blocking, and making sure that the opponent doesn't get the clean shots or the clean punches, and then strikes back and lands more punches, they are going to win. This is something that we need to be clear about off, off the bat here, because uh, understanding that, then you can see why Fury won. Remember that fight between Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather? A lot of people thought that Pacquiao won. He was controlling the inside of the ring, the center, and he was definitely being more aggressive. However, it's not effective aggression because he's not landing majority of the punches. Mayweather was. So it's easy to confuse who the victor is there. When it came to this fight, it was very very close and usually close fights or closely or closely scored fights can be very controversial now it's easy to say that the boxing world is corrupt which it is true by the way but how however in this instance that's not the case so i actually got my notebook here and i watched the, the fight and i scored it accordingly there are some details that i ha may have missed but I'm going to go through each round, why I scored it uh, the way I did, and also go like where it could have gone either way. And then, you know, at the end when we tally up the scores, uh, you can see uh, what I'm getting to. Round one. Fight. All right. So round one, I've got written here. Uh, 10-9 Fury. So, even though that Nagano controlled the ring, Fury was the one that landed more punches in this round. You know, he was throwing feints, throwing more jabs, you know, doing more of the feeling out uh, type of deal and actually controlling the pace of the round. Round two. Fight. So round two, 10-9 to Fury. Uh, so even though the Nagano landed more significant punches, by throwing those uppercuts in the clinch or whatnot, and also throwing more effective jabs. Uh, Tyson Fury, however, had better jab control and ended up landing more punches because of that. And now, also, even though that Nagano was pushing Fury towards the ropes and corners, Fury's defense was good, and he, you know, slipped, parried punches effectively, and he moved out of the corners and away from the ropes. Uh, very well as well. So effective aggression on Nagano's side uh, would have been marked down. Plus, don't forget, uh, Fury was still throwing quite a few feints there too. Round three, fight. Round three, I gave to Nagano. All right. Now, this was because Nagano got the knockdown. Now, you could have scored this 10-8 for Nagano, but. Um, we can argue that we could score 10-9 because Fury was in control of most of the round. And yes, that can happen. Look it up. So, with that being said, like, I was on Fury's side with this and um, because he was controlling the round a lot better, still throwing a lot of jabs and whatnot and taking risks, but, you know, Ngannou surprised him and got the knockdown. And, you know, with it being heavyweight boxing, 
it's the most unpredictable division, right? Anything can happen because a lot of guys are power punches. So we can mark that 10-9 even. I know most people won't agree with that, but yeah, that's how I'm scoring it. Round four. Fight. Okay, round four. Now, I gave this one to Fury as well. I was just about to give it to Nganu. All right. So, it was a close round. We were seeing a more cautious Fury. And I, th I do think Nangano is controlling the pace of this fight, or this round, uh, better. However, I did think that Fury landed more punches. I'm always going to... We're always looking for who lands more punches in the round. Round five. Fight. Okay, and round five. So, I gave this one to Fury as well, 10-9. And the reason for that is Fury was being more aggressive in this round, using the jab and throwing those cheeky lead hooks off the jab uh, to keep control. But he was also taking more risks going in and trying to land more uh, significant punches. And then immediately clinching when failing to do so. So... He was denying a lot of uh, Nanganu's counters here by doing that. As Nanganu was actually getting wise to how Fury was exiting the pocket and then following up with uh, counters. But then I also noticed that Nanganu's uh, mouth was open and that he was breathing through the, his mouth at this point. So uh, that's a clear sign of him getting gassed. And if we look at the stats, uh, you can see they're pretty much tied. But... <sighs> Even though that they're tied, like, that is distributed over a number of rounds. And, of course, we're marking this by who wins the round. Not the entirety of this fight at this point. Round six. Fight. Okay, so, round six. I gave this one to Nanganu. And I actually wrote here, I didn't make any notes on this round, as it was a staller. But Nganu landed and threw more punches here. So uh, he was controlling this round. That's, I didn't write anything significant because it was a bit of nothing going on. Round seven. Fight. Okay. And round seven. I gave this one to Nganu. So the reason why I said Nganu is the winner of this round he was clearly in control and still could have scored a knockdown if it wasn't for that sloppy clinch of Fury. Um, and Nganu was more familiar with clinching, so he knew how to work his way out of them a, a lot better than Fury did. But because of the clinch, uh, you could have marked it as a, a stumble. There wasn't a clear knockdown given by, by the ref, so... Uh, where Nagano scored 10-9 here, <laughs> if it wasn't for that sloppy clinch, he would have definitely got a 10-8, a which could have changed uh, the outcome of this fight quite dramatically. This was also the round where Fury threw that illegal elbow, and the ref didn't do much about this. Uh, should have just at least given a warning. Uh, now... <sighs> It was a clear illegal blow. However, with the ref's discretion, they give the warning or deduct the point. And generally, uh, it's usually a warning first before deducting points. So, because of that, you could say, you could always point fingers to the ref, but once again, it's always ref's discretion. If you check my vlog, uh, one of my boxes did a fight at nationals and the other guy was just clinching so much and holding and the ref didn't even give any warnings throughout the entire fight where there should have been a, a clear warning but then also <laughs> the ref ended up deducting a point on both sides which didn't really make sense I don't know how that was a legitimate call so once again, ref's discretion there. You can't be angry about it. You should never leave this in the hands of the judges, right? Round eight. Fight. Round eight. So, I also gave this round to Nganu, 
And I wrote here, in this round, Ngannou landed that right hand so much that it may have made Fury take this fight a bit seriously. Well, I think he was taking it seriously from the th th third round already, but I think what I'm trying to say here is that he was, you know, getting hurt here, so he had to, like, up his game a bit. However, however, so, however, I did notice Ngannou's mouth breathing even more here. So, he may have been getting gassed quite significantly in this round. And this could have been played against him now. And it's going to be playing against him in the next two rounds. But, even though that he was landing more significant punches against Fury, maybe Fury was smothering them in order to get Nganu to throw more powerful shots to get him more tired. You know, losing a round in order to win the next two. And at this point, I've got the round or the score even at this point. Now, I just want to note that round six was a bit of a staller. So, you know, that could have even gone to Fury. So, I might not even have this tied. And with regards of round three, which could have been 10-8, round six could have been 10-9 to Fury. So, either way, you know, I would have still been tied round nine fight okay and then round nine i gave to fury as well 10 9 it's another round with not much happening and you know fury was showing more effective aggression towards the end still landing more punches final round fight and then round 10 also fury won more stalling you know or nothing happening there. It's the last round. And I think he could have just, you know, not taken more risks. And, you know, because Nagano's probably going to aim for another knockdown. And, you know, with Nagano being tired, he could, you know, stall it a bit. And, again, throwing... In this round, he was throwing more feints and jabs. And this was, like, the deciding factor of him winning the round. So, in the end, I scored this 96 Fury... 94 Nanganu, which uh, if I were to redo this with uh, different scores, it would probably end up 97 with Fury and 93 Nanganu. Now, that's the scorecard. Uh, I think Teddy Atlas also scored a 97, 93 uh, for Fury. So, at the end of the day, it was a very, very close fight. And... Fury won. He won the majority of the rounds. Uh, he was the one fainting, throwing more jabs uh, with more rounds, and that will be considered effective aggression, especially with his defense now um, not allowing Nanganu to land most of his punches. Uh, the fight's going to go towards Fury. Now, I know some people marked it as uh, ring control, but ring control is not effective aggression unless... You know, you are the one controlling the pace of the fight, throwing more of the punches, the feints, and landing more significant punches. And mind you, you're not getting marked on damage. You're getting marked on the punches you've landed. And that's an important thing that you need to consider when, when scoring these things. Damaging blows count just as much as other punches. Now, when it comes to a cut, for instance, all right, that's, that becomes a winning factor if, they, if it's a stoppage. And that will be declared by the ref and ringside doctors. Uh, the knockdowns, you got the three knockdown, which is obviously a TKO. It's, it's done, right? Then, you know, with the point difference being so close, it's very easy to side with the boxer that got the knockdown. And the boxer that's landing the more the more damaging blows. So yeah, I know it's upsetting, and uh, a few guys won't agree with my opinion here. Like, and I'm gonna say this now: I'm not very good at scoring uh, fights. I really am not because you know, like, I do miss details and stuff like that, and my opinions on certain things will be different from others. Like, you know, round three scoring at 10-9 when majority will score at 10-8. But I do feel that 
uh, Fury was more dominant in the round, controlling the pace and whatnot, and then got surprised with, you know, <laughs> getting knocked down. So, so there will be a difference in opinion on, on that round. So, um, that's just how I view it, unfortunately. Yeah, so, I would just like to pick your guys' brains on, on this matter. So, please, let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, I want to open a discussion here. Please give a like, subscribe, you know, show your support. It's always appreciated. So, until next time, keep safe, take care. Cheers.